I'm filmmaker Bayou Bennett. And I'm Daniel Lear. Welcome to The Dream State. This is a show where you will get the tools to help you follow your dreams and make them come true. We are super, super pumped that Chaz Bohorkas is here with us today. He's known as the godfather of graffiti. He was in our short award-winning documentary, LA Aboriginal. I just have no real introduction for Chaz. You're bigger than life, man. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> so Chaz, we are actually in Highland Park right now. This is like part of your roots, right? Can you talk about you know, the early beginnings of your artwork here? Well, you know, Highland Park in your community is basically your roots of where you come from that, that defines who you are. So moving here in the, uh, in the early 50s and all that, I went to the local high schools. I know all the riverbeds. I know every hill, mountain, every knickknack, every alley. This is my community. This is where I was born and this is where I was raised. But it was the graffiti that fascinated me. And when I first encountered it, encountered it as a little boy, I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to read it and understand it and be part of that graffiti. Wow. Chaz, on The Dream State, we talk about art as being a very important, you know, uh, part of the society and creation of culture, creation of identity, creation of so many things. Now you guys, you have actually guys walking around with your image tattooed on their bodies. Can you talk about that? Like to create a cultural image that's so strong that it resonates in that way. Well, you know, I mean, as a young kid, I was trying to find myself and I found that, okay, I'm part Hollywood, I'm part hippie, mm -hmm. and I'm part Chicano. So I combined an image that, that, that included all those. So I used the Day of the Dead skull, uh, Pimp Daddy uh, from New York that was happening in the 60s in the movies, and then also my hippie experience. I did a skull with a big fedora hat, a fur collar, and smoking um, a cigarette. And I changed that, I took that and I crossed its fingers and it turned into Mr. Lucky. That became my tag. Mm -hmm. I drew it out and I made one of the first stencils in Los Angeles a street art history. Important. That's beautiful. I want to talk a little bit about that because you are famous. I just have to say it to our you know, viewers here today. You, people know you in the industry. They know you in your culture. They know you in the industry. You were very respected. And, you know, I know there was like years where you didn't have an audience. You would work for like 10 years without having an audience. But the other day, mm -hmm. we're at your show and there's thousands of people lined out. You've got people take, getting your autograph. You've got cameramen everywhere. Sure. Can you please tell me like, what was going through your mind when you were you didn't have an audience but you're like this is my communication this is my culture like i mean i have chills thinking about what i saw versus what i know you've been through mm -hmm. to get there can you tell me a little bit about the journey and the how you, the persistence well with graffiti okay that was that was a language that basically that i was the only one who was able to envision it because nobody believed that graffiti was art at all not even the gangsters, and they were the only ones who were doing it. So once I saw the languaging, then I made a certain point to discover its intent, its purpose, its history, its grammar. I learned how to, de to decipher not only every symbol, but take that as my toolkit and start saying uh, beliefs of my own using graffiti, uh, identifying my com who I am, uh, my friends, my community, my Highland Park in the world, I would start tagging that. What does that spell? It spells pride. Then how do you do it? By making the most beautiful, strongest letters that you can. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to paint script, learn calligraphy, and also I had to learn how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> Basic things, because when it comes to a point, not only do you do this, you have to defend yourself. Mm. So I had to learn a voice and I learned how to write and how to spell to defend myself. Wow. Chaz, just take us, you painted this very romantic image for me one time of you painting in the LA River with the moonlight on the water there. You called it the, tell, tell us about that, like, you know, the years of not being appreciated for what you do, but how did you stick to it, man? You just went with what was right. It's amazing. I believe the most successful artists are the ones who are influential. So you really have to believe in yourself first. Mm -hmm. Second, you gotta be good, because only the best artists make it. And that means you have to believe in yourself and you have to practice every single day. You have to practice your letters, you have to practice your craft. Mm -hmm. And not only, not only that, it's gotta make sense. Your work has to be unique, but it also has to be profound. It has to mean something. So my tagging, okay, I could tag my name, I could tag my friends, but how can I make it profound? Mm -hmm. By including my community. Like I say, by including that pride, by that, that presence, I needed a tag, I needed a symbol. So that skull, Senor Suerte said it all, you know. This was like Mr. Lucky, but it was in some ways, it was saying good luck. 
In the beginning, I was one of the best artists in LA with graffiti because I was the only graffiti artist. Uh, when I approached, uh, when I was turning 40, mm -hmm. I met the new wave of graffiti artists, and this was in the late 80s. And they felt graffiti was about vandalism, mm -hmm. it was about going up and, uh, and destruction, and about the crews. Mm -hmm. And the conversation was, is graffiti art? For 10 years in the uh, 90s, we fought that, that question in uh, universities, in art schools, in, uh, in venues, and all that. Now it sounds silly but graffiti was not considered art. It took all of us. I said, once these young men grow up to be in their 30s, in their 40s, what are they gonna do? They're gonna be painting, and then we're all gonna form an army. That's what I tell the young men now. I go, we are an army of generals where everybody brings their own style to the table. That's what LA offers to the world. We have some of the best artists in Los Angeles, best graffiti artists in the world. Okay, Chaz, so we wanna get into some like, you know, habits of yours, some, you know, characteristics. What are some of the things that you feel that you do that make you, you know, so able to have the career that you do? First, you have to be good. And like mm. I say, second, your work has to be profound, has to be noticeable from across the room and say, oh, that's John One, that's Saber, that's Relic, that's, you know, mm. that's Retina. You have to be able to recognize their work mm -hmm. and also like it has to have deep meaning. Next, you need to promote yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, there's all different kinds of ways. Tell me about your embracing of like the marketing part of it. You give great interviews, you're a great public speaker, you know, you're doing stuff on social media, like you're not waiting for some other person, some agency to represent you. You're just doing it, making it happen. You can't wait for anybody. Lee Iacocca once said, lead, follow, or get out of the way. <laughs> so you need to not only believe yourself, you need to move forward. Mm -hmm. If somebody's an obstacle, either jump over him, go around, or embrace him. The art market offers you an opportunity to, we say, you want to sell, mm -hmm. which gives you the ability to have a life with art. You need to have a life with art, so you need to find out exactly how your art sells. And uh, the art market is going to categorize you. I needed to learn how to define myself. Mm -hmm. When somebody asks you, well, what kind of art do you do? You need to describe yourself. Okay, you go to a university and give a lecture there. You're speaking to students. You need to describe yourself in a way that they start from from your down to your history but exactly why are you even standing on that st on that stage so much good stuff i think it's time to ask Chaz for his five quick tips okay. for our audience <laughs> <laughs> on reaching their success is there any like five quick tips that you think are the most important ones besides all the gems that you've given us okay so some basic things let's say you're real young mm. all right and you're you're learning to draw okay copy who are your famous, most famous artists? You pick them, go into the art books, find somebody that you like and copy it because you're gonna stumble into the same problem that artist did when he was drawing it. You need to be a problem solver. You need to learn skill, like a musician. 10 years of practice just to be able to learn your instrument. You need to learn your hand skills, you know, your eye and hand coordination, uh, memory, muscle memory, all that stuff. Mm. Best way to start to learn your skills if you're not in an art school, practice copy. Copy and, until you get it really, really down. All kinds of styles. Is The second is, uh, I would say, if you want to be more serious, learn some art history. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, art history, you're going to find stories of other artists, how they struggled, how they survived, how they conquered, how they became art, uh, famous, you know. Learn to be part of the, of the family of artists. Mm -hmm. wow. And then also, you know, like I say, uh, believe in yourself, only the best are going to survive. So you got to be good and then you have to t ask yourself, what do I have to offer the market? I could be an artist at home, but what do I have to, have to offer the market mm -hmm. to make product? Okay, then create paintings, create that clothesline, you know, mm -hmm. uh, those uh, skateboard decks, those surfboards. You need product. You need some type of artifact to project who you are. Yeah. And also promote yourself. Nobody's mm -hmm. gonna promote you except yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can't wait for somebody to come by, come by and give you a show. Okay. You know. So this is to your sweet success that you've had and for future sweet success, so we want you to choose a- the Dream State Donut. These the are Dream vegan, State. man. These they're are vegan, vegan and they're made so with donut. healthy. Any choice is your- Well, there's only one flavor. What's that? Chocolate. Ah, there you go. There's okay, a chocolate no. site. That's yours, my friend. That's right. 
Thank you, Chaz. The things you've shared with us here today are powerful and meaningful and are going to help the young generation continue the legacy that you've started. You're so thank welcome. you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on The Dream State with Chaz Bohorkas. We love you guys.